I need you guys to listen very carefully. This is a ranking of the top 21 resorts that I went to this season and this season only. This does not include a ranking of all the resorts I have went to. This does not include a ranking of all of the resorts out there. So don't leave a comment that's saying, wow, man, I can't believe Mammoth isn't on the list or Kirkwood. If I didn't go to it, it's not going to be on this list. So these resorts are all ranked simply based on their level of expert terrain. The only thing I truly kept consistent across these resorts is that when I went to one of these resorts, I typically looked for the most advanced or extreme terrain and went to that zone to ski it. So I didn't go to the lodges, I didn't go to the restaurants, I didn't go to the terrain parks, so I can't really speak about that sort of stuff. These rankings are essentially about 80% based on just the extreme terrain. And the other 20% includes kind of everything else, the parking, the accessibility, the farmability of the zones. I mean, just sort of like how the resort flows as a whole. Also, this video is not meant to be a review of these resorts. I have 21 resorts to get to, so it's not really a complete synopsis of each place, simply just a little recap of some of my favorite parts of the resort. Don't expect a full review of these resorts, but if you're interested in learning more, check out the other videos on the channel because I've made full length vlogs sort of exploring each one of these places. And the last thing is that this is just my opinion. It's not that big of a deal. If I put your favorite resort low or something like that, don't get too butthurt about it because all of these resorts are truly incredible and have their own sort of thing or spice that makes them unique. And honestly, all 21 of these resorts, when put into perspective um, to something, let's say someone who might only ski in the Midwest or the East, these are all incredible places that I took the time, spent the money to travel to. So this is by no means saying that some of these resorts aren't good. It's just if I had to objectively rank the resorts, which is very hard to do, this is sort of where they lined up. Kicking off this list in the number 21 spot as my least most favorite resort is Sun Valley in Ketchum, Idaho. This is a beautiful place. The town of Ketchum is really rad. The Sawtooth Mountains are some of the most beautiful terrain that I've been able to see this season. But for me, Sun Valley just lacks that really sort of extreme type of terrain. Sun Valley is notorious for their nice, long, steep groomer runs. But for me and my style of skiing, I've been to Sun Valley a few times now and it just seems rather dull for me. So to start off this list at 21 is going to be Sun Valley. Starting off the top 20 is going to be Beaver Creek Resort in Colorado. This was a really cool place that I haven't spent too much time at, but overall similar to Sun Valley, it seemed rather mellow in terms of their level of terrain. Although they did have a really cool area called the Stone Creek Chutes, which is where we spent most of our time there. And I was honestly super impressed with this zone. There is some really gnarly rock hits. And it's an interesting pitch in area to ski. The farmability was great, meaning that um, it was easy to lap and get around to. But overall, without this area, Beaver Creek is quite mellow, and honestly, you could go to the top of the resort and you're still skiing green run. So for this reason, I'm gonna rank it a higher than Sun Valley because it does have this really cool sort of advanced expert only area. But looking at the place overall, it is quite mellow, but a fun place to go to nonetheless. This is hard for me to do simply because I really don't have enough experience at this resort, but coming in at number 19 is gonna be Heavenly in Lake Tahoe. I was here during the massive Sierra storm over Christmas and literally skied one area the entire time. So I don't really have the best look at this resort. So simply just looking on the trail map, it looks like there's some cool stuff at this resort, but to be honest, I can't really speak enough to it. But just going off the trail map, going off my experience there at the time, which was incredible, even though I only skied one lift, Heavenly is going to take the number 19 spot. If for not anything else, just the view of Lake Tahoe as you're skiing down. Moving on to number 18, Beaver Creek's neighbor Vail Resort. Now this might surprise some people, but Vail is an incredible place. It is a massive resort. Everyone always talks about their back bowls being huge and they are, it's a really cool place to explore. But if you notice, if you ever look at the Vail Trail map, there really isn't a ton of double black terrain out there. A lot of it is just single black stuff, which is still a lot of fun. Pow days at Vail can be incredible, but just because of the fact they don't really have a much more advanced area, that is why Vail is sort of getting the spot that it is. Vail is very expensive and it can also get pretty crowded, but all in all, it's a fun place. There just isn't, again, like a super extreme sort of area, even though they have so much terrain. So Vail is going to take 
that spot. For my lucky number 17, the most recent place we went to is going to be Winter Park Resort. Now I really wanted to give this place a higher rating because the Cirque up at Winter Park is pretty extreme. There are some really cool places to ski up there, lots of cool shoots. So in a way I feel like I am doing this a bit of a disservice, but one of the main reasons why I ranked Winter Park a little bit lower compared to other resorts is just due to the farmability of that area. It takes so long to do that hike and just do a whole lap up at the Cirque. I think in a total of like three or four hours, I only did two laps up there. And honestly, the vert for the amount of work I put in was rather disappointing. So I understand they do run little shuttles around there, but I was not afforded that luxury at the time. So if the area was more accessible and more easy to ski, I think Winter Park would be higher up there. But the fact that you had to do such long laps to ski that kind of turned me off to the place, but still a really sick place, super close to Denver. So the accessibility and the overall flow of the mountain works pretty well, but um, I just wish the Cirque was a little bit easier to lap. And staying right along with the Colorado resorts, next up on the list in the number 16 spot is Snowmass in Aspen, Colorado. I had an incredible time at Snowmass and it was honestly one of my most fun days of skiing for the year. They have a little bit of everything and it kind of reminds me of a park city type of resort where they have train parks, they have nice groomers, they have trees, and they have a little bit um, of an advanced area with the Cirque headwall up there as well and this really cool pommel lift which is basically something you put in between your legs. So in that regard, it was a really cool and unique experience and you get to sort of get a taste of above treeline skiing. But similar to Winter Park, the Cirque headwall was a tough area to lap because you had to take another lift to even get to the, to the pommel lift. And then because it's kind of a different lift, a lot of people do struggle on it. So even if you had only 20 people in line, each person might take a minute to load. So you could be waiting 20, 30 minutes just to do a lap. So again, if this was a bit easier to ski, I think Snowmass would be ranked higher, but for what it's worth, it was a really fun zone, but for the vert and the amount of work it takes to get there, Snowmass is going to take the number 16 spot. The first Utah resort to hit the list is in Northern Utah called Snow Basin Resort. This is a really, really great place to ski. There's a lot of cool terrain here, but just ultimately it is a bit more of a mild place. And that's not to say there aren't some really cool shoots. You have the Peak Allen Tram, I believe it's called, which is where they hosted the downhill event for the FIS. And there's some really cool shoots around there and things to ski, but just ultimately as a whole, it is a bit mellower. I feel like other resorts similar to the Heavenly One, I only went to Snow Basin this year for opening day. So again, I don't have the best read on it, but I have been there before a few times and I enjoy my time there, but just relative to some of the other places we went to, Snow Basin is going to come home in number 15 as the first Utah resort. Getting inside the top 15 is kind of the point to where I might get crucified for ranking some of these places the way I do, but it's honestly very, very difficult to put these in an objective order. So coming in at number 14 is going to be Solitude Mountain Resort. I think this is a rad place. It's up there in Big Cottonwood Canyon, which you just naturally get some good terrain and great snowfall, but I do think it lacks a little bit in terms of the overall terrain compared to other places. You have Honeycomb Canyon, which is really cool, and you have Fantasy Ridge, which I've never personally skied before or gotten around to, but I think because of the accessibility and things like that, that is why I ranked Solitude where I did. But like I said, it's a great place and it's, it's hard to put it there. But when I look at the other list of resorts, I think it might make some sense. Taking home the number 13 spot is our second California resort on this list here. And that's Alpine Meadows, also in the Truckee area here. And again, I only went to this once, I only been here once in my life. And the time I was there was probably the best ski I have ever had, but only one lift was open and that was the Treeline Cirque. So I didn't really get a chance to experience the whole mountain. So I had to kind of resort to looking at the trail map and just seeing what other people have said about it. And just the fact that they have mostly just black diamonds um, and sort of big open bowls, which is pretty, which is fun. I think in terms of just looking at the terrain, that is why Alpine Meadows is gonna come home in the 13th spot. But again, these are the hard ones for me to rank because I just don't have a lot of experience there to truly get a good flavor of what the resort has to offer. But just to try to stay consistent with everything else, Alpine Meadows is going to be the number 13 spot. For number 12 on this list, we are coming back to Big Cottonwood Canyon in Utah for Brighton Resort. Now Brighton is a place, probably my least frequented place that I've ever been in Utah. And again, I only went there early in the season this year, but it was probably one of the deepest powder days that I had all year long, which was pretty incredible. Brighton is a really rad area at the top of Big Cottonwood Canyon. They have 
a lot of gnarly terrain, especially off the Millie lift, and even being able to hike up to Mount Millie, which kind of, for me, gives it that little more of an elevated spot on this list, just the fact that you can do some hiking and that they have some really cool terrain all around the mountain. So Brain is one of those places where there's a good amount of advanced terrain, nothing too extreme or too gnarly, but if you kind of know where to look, there's a lot of cool shoots in and around the mountain. So for that reason, Brighton is going to be just outside the top 10 and take home the number 12 spot. As we encroach on the top 10, we're going back to Colorado for the number 11 spot. And this one kind of hurt because I loved my time here. And I know a lot of people really enjoy Steamboat Springs in Colorado. And um, the Christmas tree bowl area over there was some of the sickest terrain I've skied all year long. I think the tree skiing there might be the best I've ever experienced. And I can only imagine on a proper pow day just how good that terrain would be. So apart from Christmas tree bowl and the Christmas tree shoots and all that sort of stuff, I think Steamboat is a bit more on the mellow side. So if they didn't have that, I feel like Steamboat would be lacking a little bit, but just that area alone makes up for it. However, the one bummer is that when I talk about farmability, that area is not that easy to lap. You simply have to take two more lifts to get back there. The lifts are kind of slow and that lift on the backside can have a lot of people. So it can take a long time to actually do a proper lap on Steamboat. And then also having to kind of hike your way out there makes for a cool experience. But in terms of just getting some really hard laps in, I think that's what kind of turned me off a little bit to the area. But in terms of the resort, the infrastructure, the lifts, Steamboat was really great. So sad to put it where it is, but I think it kind of deserves that spot, all things considered. And now we are starting the top 10, which at this point, all of these places are just incredible ski resorts and it honestly is, it just gets harder and harder to actually rank these. But if I gotta do it, um, number 10 is going to be Deer Valley Resort right here in Park City, Utah. And I think Deer Valley is one of those places that gets totally overlooked um, for just being a groomer place. There's very expensive, bougie stuff like that, which it is, don't get me wrong, but Deer Valley takes proper care of their runs. If you enjoy skiing groomers, they have some of the best steep manicured groomers, but for me, the Empire Bowl, Empire Express, the daily shoots up there are some there's some pretty sick terrain up there that you can get into very easily. So again, talking about farmability, it's an easy zone to farm and lap. Um, and I think it's totally just overlooked for being a, a place for groomers. Every time I go to Deer Valley, I always leave saying, wow, I gotta come here more often. And it typically draws less crowd than Park City. So number 10, I think it's only fair to do Deer Valley. It's consistently ranked the number one resort in North America, like eight or nine years in a row now. So I feel good with Deer Valley kicking off our top 10. And staying right here in Park City, number nine is going to be Park City Mountain Resort. I'm probably a bit biased skiing here essentially my entire life, but I love the Jupiter area up at Park City. It's not the most gnarly terrain, but you do get a good variety of uh, tree skiing, cliffs, open bowls, hike to terrain, which I think makes Jupiter really special. And more importantly, Jupiter is probably the easiest zone to farm of any place on this list. The lift is this really cool two-seater lift that kind of makes you feel like you're in a whole different area of the mountain. It's pretty tucked away, private, and it's just a super easy zone to lap. You can do 10 laps at Jupiter and just be done for the day. You can hike to the very top of Jupiter Peak. So for me, Park City is just one of those places that I'll always have a good day. There's always good snow in the trees there. And so that's why Park City is going to be ranked number nine. A place that honestly surprised me when I went to it for the number eight spot on this list is Aspen Highlands in Aspen, Colorado. I had heard this place was pretty legit, but I honestly didn't expect it to be what it was. Aspen Aspen Highlands is basically one of the four mountains in Aspen and it's basically just a concentrated area of advanced to extreme terrain. So it was surprising to me just how steep some of the runs were here. And there's a lot of cool runs off the deep temerity lift, I believe it's called, which when I came to, I was like, wow, this is actually some pretty steep skiing. But I think the highlight for me at Aspen Highlands was the hike to Highlands Bowl. This was not for the faint of heart. It took about 40 minutes to an hour at some pretty decent elevation, but the amount of runs, the pitch you get up there was pretty incredible. So the hike itself wasn't very farmable for obvious reasons, but a lot of the stuff off the Deep Temerity Lift is easily accessible. And I think on good snow days, um, it'd be a really fun place to be. And I think if I lived in Aspen, that would probably be where I spend most of my time. So for number eight on this list, 
is going to be Aspen Highlands. Staying right in Colorado for number seven on this list in a place that I used to call my home resort during my time in Colorado is the Arapahoe Basin. Now, this is one of those examples where I only went to a basin this year at the very beginning of the season. My very first day of skiing actually was at a basin, but I know this mountain really well and I spent a lot of time here to know that a basin is extremely gnarly. They have a zone over there called the East Wall, which I think is probably amongst the most gnarly inbound resort skiing you can do. The hike to get there is pretty crazy. There's some shoots where you literally have to rappel down with a rope. And so for me, a basin would just always kind of has a special place where it really progressed my skiing and took my almost bigger mountain or advanced stuff to the next level. Level. Recently, they opened the steep gullies, which is some of the most um, steep terrain really anywhere here in uh, in the US from a resort. And they also have the famed Palavicini lift, which is just a place of almost just like all double black diamonds right off the base, which is really fun to just farm. And again, the whole mountain is just like one big playground for advanced skiing. So by far, A Basin is just one of those sick places I think everyone uh, needs to experience at some point. As we are knocking on the door of the top five here, this next one might make some people's skin crawl, but number six is going to be Jackson Hole Mountain Resort. I do think a little bit Jackson can be a bit overhyped simply because of Corbett's Coulard and sort of the the media that's around what Corbett's is. The tram at Jackson Hole is incredible. The amount of vertical feet you can get is simply unmatched in my opinion. But the issue with Jackson I find is that it can be very sensitive in terms of the snow conditions. It gets sun basically all day long. so. The snow itself can be a bit iffy, especially um, in places like the Hobacks and things like that. But the shoots off of the sublet chair, like the Alta shoots one, two, and three, are legit. There's some crazy big rocks, some cliffs there. You have the entire Casper headwall, which is also an incredible place to ski. So by no means am I saying Jackson is not insane. It's it's by far one of the sickest resorts out there. Um, but I just think when I break it down a little bit more, Jackson to me isn't cracked up to what everyone says it is, but I'm probably gonna get eaten alive for that one. But hey, it's just my opinion, not the big of a deal. I've been there a handful of times now. My sister lives up there and uh, I love going there, but I think there are some better places um, to have that top five. And to start the top five here, um, again, extremely hard to really put these in order, but the number five spot is gonna be the last of the California resorts and that is Squaw Valley. Again, I only went to Squaw Valley one day during the storm and literally only skied the KT22 chairlift, but I do think that's really all I needed to understand just how crazy of a place this is and why it is known as sort of the birth or the origin of free skiing. Everything under the KT22 chair was absolutely insane. Some of the rocks, the shoots in there, it's like um, that is a legit place to ski and it's no wonder why such good skiers come out of that area. Looking at the trail map, there's so much more of the upper mountain that seems really legit and fun to ski. So for that reason, I think it's a very formidable place. The fact that you could just rip KT22 all day long makes it very appealing. So starting the top five is going to be Squaw Valley in Truckee, California. Breaking into the number four spot, which I honestly surprised myself when I got here um, is Telluride, Colorado. Now, I knew Telluride was pretty rad of a place, but I really didn't realize it until I got there and experienced it and saw it for my own eyes. When I was there, unfortunately, the snowpack was not very good, but the fact that you could hike to 13,200 feet at Palmyra Peak and ski off the top of that inbounds terrain, to me, just kind of blew my mind. To also have the Gold Hill shoots in that same area, the amount of upper mountain inbound skiing is just pretty pretty insane for a resort. They literally refer to themselves as having some of the most advanced gnarly terrain for a resort in the country and I truly believe it. So Telluride is gonna take that number four spot. I think it's a really cool zone, lots of fun terrain there um, and I can't wait to go back in better snow conditions. The top three, let's go. The top three is just insane. These places um, are kind of, in my opinion, just the Mac Daddy, the Mecca of skiing here in the West. I mean, to start it off, this is again, it was hard to even put these three in order, but uh, number three is going to be Alta Resort at the top of Little Cottonwood Canyon in Utah. Now Alta, like, if you haven't heard about Alta, then I don't really know what to tell you, but it's basically just a magical place where they just get so much snow all year long and it's uh, truly an incredible zone of just extreme terrain. There's so much 
to offer to advance and extreme skiers there that it's it's hard to uh to not want to put this at number one but there's honestly so much variety from the wildcat chair to everything off collins being able to hike the shoots on baldy things like that it really is sort of just like this endless playground of advanced extreme training and i do find the one little drawback for me with alta is that it seems like there's a lot of traversing to get to different places where um, other resorts are a little bit easier to get around so the overall flow of alta to me can be a little bit wonky but that might just be because i don't know the most efficient way to get around but none of that even matters for the snow quality the snowfall and just the general shoots and terrain you get at a place like alta the top two has been by far the hardest to put one over the other and like honestly it's essentially a tie but I can't end it on a tie. And I went back and forth sort of trying to figure out which one takes the cake here. But number two is going to be Big Sky Resort in Montana. Big Sky completely blew me away with the terrain that it had. And to be honest, I kept telling myself, like, I'm surprised this terrain is accessible and open to just like the common folk who show up and buy a lift ticket because some of this terrain, I just feel like, it's just stuff that like shouldn't just be open to anyone like you should have to sign a waiver or something and again i only went up there for a weekend and probably the worst snow year that's been on recent memory but the stuff that i did ski the headwaters the hiking completely blew me away and was probably the sickest run i've ever done in my life the fact that they have the tram they have the big couloir or whatever it's called up there the potential that's there is essentially sort of infinite but the reason why it took the number two spot and not the number one spot is again because of that factor of farmability meaning just the the ability to do laps in a short amount of time for the amount of work to sort of skiing is a little bit lacking just because of the hiking having to wait for the tram the access stuff like that so that's the really the only reason why i took the number two spot but overall big sky is probably one of the sickest places i've ever been to in my life oh man what a list what a list and at this point if you guys follow the channel um, and you've been around it's probably no surprise what took the number one spot but that is snowbird in Little Conwood Canyon in Utah, Snowbird is just, um, it's just one of those places every time I'm there, no matter how many times I ski it, it still scares the shit out of me and I have such a great time. And the reason why I really took the number one spot is simply because of just how gnarly the terrain is right from the top of the tram. You don't have to take another lift, you don't have to hike. You can basically get off the tram, go up essentially 3,300 feet or whatever it is to the very top of Snowbird, ski down a little bit and be at the top of the Cirque Traverse, which has some of the gnarliest runs that I've ever done. Great Scots is an amazing run. Um, shot 15, shot 16, very, very steep. Mock Chanel, the list goes on and on with what you can get yourself into right off the top of the tram. Because it's in the Codwood Canyons, the amount of snow it gets, the quality of snow is truly just remarkable. And it's something I think everyone needs to experience at some point in, the, in their life. If you look at the trail map for Snowbird, essentially like 70% of it is all just advanced terrain. The other 30% is basically cat tracks to, to somewhat reroute you if you get yourself in a situation that you don't wanna be in. So again, similar to like Alta, the possibilities are truly endless at Snowbird Resort. But like I said, it's just one of those places that um, I, I always love going to the tram adds this really sort of cool factor and I do think Little Conwood Canyon is one of the most beautiful places really that I've been to but definitely in Utah so for that reason I'm confident to say Snowbird Resort is by far my most favorite most gnarly most sick place that I've ever been to definitely this year and honestly at all points of my ski career there really hasn't been a place that I've been to that really takes the crown from Snowbird. Big Sky is a close second. Um, and then Alyeska in Alaska is also a pretty gnarly place, but I don't think anything is has yet to dethrone Snowbird. So congratulations Snowbird for what it's worth to take home the number one spot. Well guys, I was fortunate enough to travel to 21 different resorts this year, which is a pretty insane number. I don't think I truly realized it during the moment, but writing them all down, tallying them up to ski 21 resorts with only about, I don't know, 16 to 20 ski weekends in a year is pretty cool that we did this all in the weekend and traveled around to so many different states. We had Idaho, Wyoming, California, Colorado, Utah. It was truly remarkable and just super blessed you guys came along with me for the journey, for the ride. So let me know what your guys' list is. Heck, you can even take this list and try to put it in uh, in an order that you think. But again, just my opinion, um, just based on my experiences and stuff like that. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, every single one of these resorts is truly incredible. Um, and they all have their own 
shoe, chair, whatever it is that makes them unique and well worth visiting. So again, this list is not to rag on any one of these resorts saying that they aren't worthy. It's not a good resort because literally even right down to Sun Valley in Idaho, they are all truly remarkable and great places that I encourage everyone to visit if you ever have the opportunity to. So oh, with all that being said, that was a lot of talking for one of these. That is the completion of the second annual resort rankings video for the 20. 21 2022 season so appreciate you guys watching i hope you enjoyed and i'll see all of you guys in the next episode take it easy fam peace out